for EC, barely an inconvenience. Hey everybody, Dave here. How are y'all doing, Syndicated Pipe Club? Yet again, maybe again. I don't know exactly when you're seeing this because this is a pre-recorded episode that was recorded probably a couple months ago. We uh, have, by now, likely both had children and are, you know, being fathers. But uh, at this point, we have to do some extra work. So, hello everybody from... September 3rd, 2020. And I'll bring Greg in here in a moment because I forgot to queue up the scene. You heard him. And now you can see him. How you doing tonight, Greg? I'm doing good. I got How the sound you? on. Yes. <laughs> we got it this time. Running joke from months ago, but <laughs> last three weeks I've forgotten to turn Greg's sound on. Until today, so it's, it's perfect. I am doing well. Still smoking the church warden from months ago. Still wearing the Chris Captain hat. It's who it's stinky here. <laughs> Let's tell us put it that way. And I'm still smoking my uh canal boat uh, in my GDD Bulldog. I'll probably end up switching pipes at some point in this conversation. Oh yeah, I'm me too. Right I'm getting there. I forgot how deep this pipe is when I started it up uh, last episode that we recorded just like two minutes ago. Yeah. So today we're not talking about anything too specific. Um... Greg had uh, got a hold of me on Twitter earlier and uh, asked a question that uh, I think's uh, think's interesting. It uh, basically is what was what was your earliest fandom? Like what were you into? Like when like you were explaining it to me before we started recording. Why don't you go ahead and give everybody the idea what we're what we're looking at talking about today? Yeah, and uh, you know, feel free to add your own comments uh, in the YouTube video or in an email and uh, you know, we will try to read them whenever we uh, are in the future and this is this airs and we do another kind of fun topic episode rather than a, a deep dive uh, reviewing something um, but what was your earliest fandoms that you were into uh, when you were a kid or a teenager whatever you first uh, like kind of fell in love with and that became your thing your jam you know, you wanted to wear the t-shirts of it, uh, collected the toys or uh, the memorabilia for uh, just because it uh, meant a lot to you. And so th I was just kind of thinking about it. I thought it was a great way to kind of act as a, a little bit of a way to kind of get e everyone out there to know us a little bit more in our history of... Uh, everything that's kind of, you know, geeky and fandom related. Yeah, it's going to date me, let me tell you. I'm not, well, old, I mean, <laughs> I'm not old by any stretch, but still, I'm one of them people that grew up before the internet was a huge thing. I remember oh, yeah. before the internet was even a thing. Oh yeah, I mean, I got on the internet uh, around 96, 97, so... Uh, you know, I was uh, just barely a teenager at, at that point. Oh, yeah. Like, the internet was uh, in the 90s when it came out. I was, like, well into my teens when it was finally out for public consumption. And I was mm -hmm. in high school just, uh, just, uh, just finishing up. Like, when I, when I went to college in... 2000, we were still using floppy disks. Yeah, I was. I uh, I was using floppy floppy disks into college, and I uh, 
I remember, I think it was my junior or senior year. It was like 2004 or five. And my disk drive, uh, my floppy disk drive on my computer wasn't working. And I was uh, had my computer buddy take a look at it. And he kind of took a look at me and was like, why are you still using floppies? Just get a, just get a thumb drive. That's going to be so much easier for you. And I was just like, oh, a thumb drive. Okay. You're like, what the heck's a thumb drive? And right. I, I need to look, look this up. Because it was just what all I was used to at, at the time. Yeah, now we're all cloud-based and... Even, even writable CDs, which were a thing at one point. I mean, when you, when you think about how technology has gone just in the last three decades, from the 90s to the 2000s, the 2010s, and into now the 2020s, we're uh, loads different than we used to be. I mean... When the internet was first a thing, what we're doing now couldn't happen. Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I remember when I first discovered YouTube and uh, and everything with that. And now it's like I, I go to YouTube every day, and I can't imagine no life without it. Like it's where I go to if I if I'm doing something technical, like uh, changing the light in my car or something. I mm -hmm. go on YouTube first to to kind of watch how to do it. Is this something I can do myself, or do I need to go and pay somebody to do it? Right. Yeah, I use YouTube for a lot of that. We're on YouTube now, and uh, I've been on YouTube in the past, doing uh, Maple City Pipe Channel. And But, yeah, like, when I first started out with the internet and stuff like that, it was like Google Messenger or Yahoo Messenger or... AOL, or I'm missing one. Prodigy? No, that's not it. ICQ. Yes, ICQ. That, that's all there was. There was just like text chats that you do now, like when you're watching your favorite streamer on Twitch, or like you might be doing if we do a live show, or and you're watching us live and putting in comments for us to react to. Things like that. You, that's how communication was. And you wouldn't get a response. You'd get a response a few seconds, a few minutes later, depending on your speed, back when everything was still being done mostly with dial-up or uh, if you were really lucky. Um, cable internet. Yeah. I, I definitely do not miss the, the dial-up days. No, me neither. Me neither. I remember at my college, uh, my freshman year, like uh, the hardest day to get online was on, on Mondays, because that's when uh, the website homestarrunner.com would update, and uh, they would have uh, the strong bad emails, and everyone after uh, lunch would be like trying to get on just to watch the latest uh, strong bad email. Okay. Which I was like, uh, if you're not familiar with it, it was more of like a, like a kind of like a, a webtoon series that was uh, ah okay okay that was really popular for uh, like the early 2000s. I see. Oh, all right. Well, I never got into any of those. I didn't get into into my uh, watching internet fair until more recently. Like when I started playing Sea of Thieves, I did the same thing you do with your car. I went to YouTube. Found some guides and gameplays, which naturally transitioned into I need to see how this is done during gameplay. So that led to Twitch mm -hmm. and a few people yeah. that I watched there, and uh, on a regular basis, because it's also entertaining to see uh, how things play out and watch uh, people that have actually are working towards making themselves a career out of the f doing you know, internet. Mm -hmm content it's an interesting time for sure but as to early fandoms I think the 
first thing that I would consider as a fandom of mine, something that I followed that I would have loved to have had the action figures for and whatnot, although I can't remember if there any action figures came out for this, but uh, one of the big ones from when I was a kid, of course, was Thundercats back in the 80s, which everybody knows it did not age well. I wouldn't recommend watching it with your kids today. Um, but there was a counterpoint to it. Um, it was uh, called Silverhawks. And uh, they were basically cyborg people with uh, retractable wings. And they flew through space. And it appealed to me in a sci-fi type of deal. They had lasers in their shoulders. And it, it was... It only lasted for one season, but I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, that's the stuff that, you know, kids love. Lasers and, uh, you know, just things that you can get as, a, as an action figure. Mm-hmm. But the one that became a true obsession for me was Star Trek. The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. Like, I mean, to the point where I did have, at one point, the pair of these action figures this is a little Will Riker action figure from the 1980s and this this poor Riker is now kind of balding in the back like Picard um, it was oh which one of my kids did this one of my kids uh, not the youngest I think maybe my middle son Alex and I must point out at this particular point in time, my youngest is not my daughter. It's uh, my second middle son, DJ. But I think it was Alex. And he got a hold of Will here and he liked to shove him in his mouth. And he sucked some of the paint off his head, giving <laughs> him a bald spot in the back. I've, I've just left it. Because, you know, it's, it's out of the package already. It's not really worth anything, but... Still, it's one of the surviving action figures from the 1980s. 1988, I think, was when this one was produced. Maybe 90. That sucker. That sounds like uh, so, uh, an alien that you'd encounter in an episode. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> but yeah, the, the one that really, uh, really got me hooked into Star Trek was Star Trek Voyager. Captain Janeway, Chakotay, Tuvok, all those characters. I watched them from start to finish, even when I was working back in the day when on-demand viewing meant you had a VHS tape and a VHS player, and uh, my grandma was kind enough to every every uh, airing date on UPN, it was, she would uh, pop the tape in and record the episode for me because I was typically working when Voyager was on the air. Yeah, I, uh, if anybody did any taping in my house, it was always my mom that would, that would tape stuff for us. It wasn't until I was a lot older that I actually started taping stuff for myself. And at the time, it was more uh, professional wrestling that I was recording. Because I was during uh, the Monday Night Wars. Where I wanted to watch both programs, but they were airing at the same time. So I would watch uh, WCW Live and then watch uh, the WWE. And, and tape it and watch it the next day. Right, right. Yeah, I didn't run into that when I was uh, when I was younger. So I was never like, and I was never a wrestling fan. I didn't mind watching it every yeah. once in a while, but I was never big into it. But yeah, Voyager was the thing for me for the entire run, the whole seven years. Let me tell you, I had two or three tapes that I rotated through, and uh, by the time we were done, I'd replaced those tapes like six or seven times. I'm trying to. I think the last thing I remember taping was uh, the Twilight Zone marathons that they would do on the Sci Fi Channel around a few years. That's what I was about. The last thing I remember actually going to the store and buying tapes for uh, to record to watch later. I'd be willing to bet that if I went and looked for the tapes, that are at my grandma's. 
I would probably find the final episode of MacGyver, the original MacGyver with Richard D. Anderson, um, the one that they played out for the last one. Commercials and all from whenever it aired, it's probably still there. Yeah, you know, there's a at, at my parents' house in the foyer. There's a stacks and stacks of tapes in the closets that uh, should probably uh, be looked through. And probably a lot of them probably purged, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. There's some that I would probably probably keep. There's a lot of Disney cartoons that my mom record for us to watch that uh, would be good to kind of hang on to. Oh yeah, some of the classic uh, Disney shows, they, uh, they came out when I was a teenager, like uh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, Darkwing Duck, DuckTales, the original one, not the one that they put out uh, more recently, mm-hmm. which I've watched that one too with the kids, and they did it justice, I like I like what they did, did to it, it's, it's really good, and I've heard they're going to do a Darkwing Duck remake, don't know when that's going to come down the pipe, but pun intended. I think they're doing like a Disney Afternoon uh, Cinematic Universe or, or the like Connected Universe. But yeah, Darkwing Duck was uh, one of my favorite uh, cartoons as a teenager. It was perfect because that one was on like right because I was a bus student. So to get to high school, it would take <laughs> or back from school when I was in high school because I went to school on a town boat. 20 minutes from where I lived if you could drive there directly but it would take an hour to get home from it so I'd be done school at like 3.20 and home by 4.10 it was a long ride for sure so yeah so that's another another way that Star Trek became uh uh, a real fandom for me because I got into the extended universe, the books, the pocketbook paperbacks that you you could get with the different stories and whatnot behind that. And uh, some of those, if you're if you're at all curious, they do still come out. I've got one. There's an anthology that's on my desk below where we're camera or camera is at. That uh, I started reading when we went camping a couple weeks ago, but I haven't been able to pick it up yet sense but I'll get through it hmm. but yeah what about you Greg I've been talking about my stuff uh, what were your what were your fandoms when you were younger yeah um, the very first show that I I honestly can remember being really obsessed with and like collecting things for was uh, the real Ghostbusters Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, I don't know if I watched the movies at the time, which uh, you know, it's kind of funny just because, like, especially as like a little kid, I was uh, very much kind of like a scaredy cat, and mm-hmm. uh, I'm kind of surprised that I, looking back now, that I was into something that had like, you know, ghosts and everything. And I haven't watched in a while, but apparently, like, there was stuff in there that was genuinely kind of creepy. I, I know I saw the movies when I was younger, but I don't necessarily remember the first. Uh, like, I think I, I watched the cartoon first and then watched the movies. But I was I was really into it. Uh, and I loved uh, I loved the Ghostbusters. Uh, I always uh, I wanted to be uh, Peter Bankman. I think I uh, I've been dressed up as him for uh, one year when I'm in uh, grade school for Halloween. Uh, I at least remember seeing like the the outfits out there, uh, and that was who I wanted to be. I don't necessarily remember having like the the proton pack, but I had a lot of the action figures. I had the ambulance, uh, the Ghostbusters themselves, and I had uh, the firehouse that they had, and. Uh, and I, ha- and I hung on to that for years too and the, the crazy thing is that uh, it came with this uh, slime that you could put at the top of it and go through these grates and go through 
like the the whole firehouse to the bottom, which uh, I don't know if I ever did, but I'm I'm sure probably my parents you know took this time and probably got rid of it. Probably uh, cause, uh, like it's one of those things where like it's neat in concept, but when you think about like okay, you're giving this to kids and they're going to be playing with this like slime substance, like it's not going to go into the the firehouse. It's going to go all over like into the carpet. Uh, on the pets <laughs> and, and the and their clothes on my and sister if I would have had it absolutely oh, for, oh yeah it uh, I'm sure it got into so many kids hair uh, and I I couldn't imagine trying to clean up after that stuff <laughs> um, but that was that was the earliest fandom that I remember really getting into um, but as much as I I loved the real Ghostbusters. It was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that I really, really got into. And with that, you know, you had the TV show, you had the movies, which I I remember going to see the movie, at least the first one, and possibly the second one in theaters. I think the third one I ended up seeing on, just on VHS. If I remember um, right, the third one was a direct-to-DV, or direct-to-DVD, direct-to-VHS release. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong. And, and funnily enough, actually, I think going to see either the first or second one in theaters, uh, uh, my friends that I, uh, I there was a, a, a brother, uh, two brothers that I was friends with. And during that time, uh, I think it was either during the movie or like right before or after, like they broke out in uh, chicken pox. And oh, my no. mom purposely had me spend the night there with them so that I would catch it and uh, and therefore uh, get that uh, so that would be out of the way so that me and my sister could catch it and get that out of the way for uh, so we wouldn't have to worry about that later in life Um, but I I had so many of the action figures like uh, and, and it's funny too like thinking about the cartoons back then like that and like Batman is that they had so many variants of the mm-hmm. heroes. Cause like you'd have the, the original heroes like just as they were in the show, but then you'd have like, a, this is their ice outfit. This is their cowboy outfit. Uh, this is their, their scuba outfit. And you, know, you had to just keep collecting them. And uh, I, I wouldn't collect them all. Like I, I would just kind of collect the ones that I thought were, were kind of cool. And there were some really interesting figures that came with that i remember there was this like a inner tube hoverboard kind of like uh uh vehicle that you could get there was uh i never got anything to the scale of the uh, firehouse like the ghostbusters that i had but i remember like there was like the the, the, the sewer play set the the turtles van which i i thought mm-hmm. the turtles van was so cool uh you know like uh G.I. Joe was kind of a little bit before my time, I think. And and they had a lot of really cool toys. Oh, they did. G.I. Joe they... was prime uh, when I was when I was younger, when I was a kid. There was uh, G.I. Joe, He-Man, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as well, because I think we cross over on that. Like, I was a little bit older with that, but we do cross over there. Um, what else? The, the original Star Wars toys uh, the, from the mm-hmm. 70s, um, I was like a year old. When, or, or, uh, no, I was a year year or two old when the second movie came out. The A New Hope predates me by a year. It's a year older than I am. Um, or I'm a year older than it. I'm not sure. It's, it's one of those things when... Uh, they made the reference to uh, the in uh, the last in the last Jedi there, the, the most recent movie. They made a reference to how old Star Wars was, and it's either a year older or a year younger than me. Like I'm on just one side of it or another. It's either 41 years or 43 years. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and watch the movie to find the reference. And I'm 42, yeah. so I'm on one side of it or the other. Yeah, I missed out. Uh obviously on the original stuff because I, I like uh, 
my birth, uh, like I, I was born, I think the year of Return of the Jedi. So that was 83, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that was my birth year. But, uh, also we're not that far removed from each other then. No. We um, cross over more than I thought. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I, I definitely remember the, the second wave of, uh, the Star Wars toys that came out in the 90s. I was at the uh, right yeah. age for that. Yeah. Yeah, I had one of the original Snowspeeder toys. I didn't know what it was until I saw it years later on eBay for, like, phenomenal money. And I'm sure my parents paid good for money for it at the time. But, yeah, like, one year for Christmas, they asked me what I wanted. I said I wanted a spaceship. I was so specific. That's what I said, spaceship. So they got me a Snowspeeder. I thought it was great. I thought it was a spaceship until uh, years later I found out it was a snow speeder from Star Wars. No. That was definitely the coolest type of uh, snow speeder. Well, uh, coolest kind of spaceship to get. Yeah, then when I realized what it was, I go, man, I had one of those as a kid. I wish I still had that and hadn't played it to death. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And that was the cool thing about the Turtles was that... Uh, because uh, like uh, my mom actually had a sealed Donatello that she hung on for years, and I, I sold it a couple years ago to, to go towards a pipe, and uh, it. Uh, but but just uh, like I would look at it, and I would, you know, they had the turtle figure with, with the soft head uh, that the original ones had. It wasn't like hard or anything, but it had like this like card of. Uh, all these plastic weapons that came with it from uh, bow staffs to like shurikens to all sorts of just fun stuff like like they they really packed a lot in these packages mm-hmm. of, uh, mm-hmm. of get stuff um yeah i love the figures for uh, for the turtles um but also what was great about that too you know, there was the show but there was also the comics, which I didn't get too many of the comics, and I didn't get the original comics. I got more of like the comics that were based on the cartoon rather than the pretty, uh, I wouldn't say mature, but the um, the more like the original stuff that uh, right, the, the darker based stuff, on. yeah, from Dark Horse, but, right, which was which was pretty dark, um, and. Uh, so they had that, and, and and I would get that every every now and again, and I, I enjoyed that. That was like one of the early comics that I would collect. Um, but they also had the video games, which were um, now in the original Nintendo Entertainment System and Super Nintendo days. Uh, a lot of, and even, it's still kind of true to this day. A, a lot of licensed products you know, based on shows. And, and movies and whatnot like more often than not the game that came with it was pretty, pretty terrible like i was a sucker for the ljn games which if you're not aware of them they they did a lot of the licensed games they're all terrible uh, they made up they make up a lot of fodder for uh, angry video game nerd episodes and deservedly so the one exception for that were the turtles games I mean, the first one wasn't that great. I mean, it's better than I really kind of remember. Like, I, it had things going for it. It wasn't like a, a horrendous game. It was at least playable. But really, it didn't seem a whole lot like the show. But then everything from Turtles the Arcade Game through, like, Turtles in Time were just these fun, excellent uh, beat-em-up games. And I played so many hours with my friends on the NES playing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 in the Manhattan Project. And uh, still to this day, there's some arcades around where I, li- where I live here that are about an hour away. And every time I go to one of them, I always have to play one of the turtle, turtle machines, whether it's Turtles in Time or Turtles the Arcade Game. Because like, to this day, they're still just kind of fun to do that and, and you know beat up a bunch of the foot clan yeah and uh I don't know, did you have a favorite turtle 
I wasn't allowed to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when it came out, so I didn't really. Um, if I had to pick now from the more modern versions, uh, either the movies or the cartoon, the cartoon uh, that's current that was currently out. I don't know if they're still doing new episodes for it or not, but uh, I discovered it a few years back on cable. And uh, Donatello from the cartoon version, I really liked, partially because I knew who voiced Donatello. Uh, it was Rob Paulson that was voicing him, and he also voiced Yakko Warner from the Animaniacs. So I, I automatically, I was a fan. Oh yeah, like uh, I love his work and I love uh, the Animaniacs. That was, if there were action figures for that that I don't remember seeing, like I, I probably would have collected that. Uh, I would have too. Was, Absolutely. That was a show that I I watched religiously. Yeah, me too. Uh, but was, uh, oh, go ahead. I was a like when I, from earlier I said I get home at four ten. Animaniacs was on at four thirty, so I had just enough time to get everything put away. Get a little bit of homework done, and then I'd stop what I was doing, watch Animaniacs, have supper, and finish. That's that was basically what my uh, that's what my week looked like when I was in school. Yeah, it was brilliant. Uh, I mean, the depth of uh, content in that show. You know, mm-hmm. you had everything from humor to really touching and serious moments. Like, yeah, absolutely. And then even educational stuff that was fun. Oh, absolutely. You learn so much from the countries of the world, uh, the, the, their version of the song where you can learn all 50 U.S. states and their capitals. I used to know that song off my heart. I knew more about the capitals and the states of the U.S. than I did my own country at the <laughs> time. But the silly thing is, I have this thing. If I learn a song and it's in an accent that's different than the one that I have, mm-hmm. I pick up the accent for the song. So I would sing the song the same way the person who voiced Wacko Warner would sing it in the same ac- same almost British weird accent. I would use it, but only during the song. <laughs> it's just weird. Yeah, and that was a show too that like it was one of the rare shows that like actually the the whole family would watch, uh, and my mom and dad and, and sister like all all loved that show, and even like when we got our very first computer my dad downloaded a sound pack that had uh the animaniacs voices so instead of like the normal computer error or computer noises it would just do uh quotes from uh you know the warner brothers or pinky and the brain uh all those characters oh yeah And to this day, like, yeah, I, st- I still love that show. I have uh, the first two seasons on DVD, and I'll definitely be uh, sharing those with my kids when, uh, when they're old enough to watch it. So, yeah, I was a, yeah, I was a big Turtles fan. And, uh, and those were, like, those were, the, I would say, like, the, the Turtles and Ghostbusters were the ones that I really remember just... Uh, being like the, the two biggest uh, influences and even like in, in college um, I was going to a church a, a very small church uh, and uh, the pastor and his wife there like they had a uh, this was when like the second series of Teenage Mutant, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was on their young son was watching and I commented that uh I used to be a big Turtles fan, and uh, and my favorite turtle was actually Raphael, and uh, and still to this day, you know, he's my favorite and my guy. And I uh, men- I mentioned that to them, and then it was like either that Sunday, or I think it might have even been my birthday or something. I went to church, and uh, they gave me this uh, present. I opened it, and it was a Raphael action figure. Nice, and, nice. And I, and I still have him, you know, downstairs to this day, just because, uh, like, it's just this uh, memento that I, I have always uh, just appreciated. Anyone that goes to that, uh, that extent in knowing me and, uh, and doing that, like, I'm hanging on to that stuff. And then I, I would say uh, the one that 
you know, I, I watched a lot of shows in the early to mid 90s, which, you know, there were a lot of great stuff, you know, like you know, Tiny Toon Adventures, Animaniacs, uh, Tasmania, um, you know, the Disney stuff. Um, but it, yeah, the, the one show, the, the one thing that I got in after that that was, uh, had a lot of merchandise and everything, it was Star Wars. Mm-hmm. That was uh, early teenagers, two teenagers. That's uh, you know what I really got into at the time, and uh, you know playing some of the Star Wars games on Super Nintendo. Uh, I never played it, but I, I was uh, always interested in trying Shadows of the Empire for N sixty four when that came out. Um, you know, there was just so much good content, and I, I even remember for a. Uh, my eighth grade graduation, uh, my dad got me this uh, LucasArts collection of uh, a bunch of their different Star Wars games, uh, like uh, Star Wars Dark Forces, and uh, I think X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, and, and everything. And I didn't play them as much as I should, because I was more of a console gamer than I was a PC gamer. But I definitely remember, you know, giving them a try and just thinking how cool it was that I was able to play these kind of games. For sure. Well, look at the time here. We should probably uh, cut this short because we could probably go on for hours. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to do another like cartoons we loved growing up. Uh, yeah, episode. definitely. But for, for this episode, for the, for the first one of these, I think uh, we've uh, rambled on quite a bit enough. We should touch more a little bit on the, on the pipes before we go, because we've both switched over at this point. And we're both smoking cobs. Yes, um, I am smoking my um, Corn Cob Nation tw- 2019 pipe, uh, which is this uh, shorter pipe. Um, and it's... Uh, Kind of like in volcano shaped fish, like for the bowl. It's really unique, and I love like the just how rough kind of uh, the bowl is. Uh, they had a smooth version and this uh, more uh, rough version, and I, uh, I'm really glad I picked this one up just because it kind of gives it a little bit more grip than the smoother kind of uh, finished cobs have. And uh, the tobacco I'm smoking is. Um, uh, Greg Pieces uh, Stonehenge Flake, which uh, you recently was had. Yeah, yeah, I just got some of that uh, a couple weeks ago. I mentioned it last week in the uh, in last week's episode. Well, wait a minute, not last week's episode. In the time frame we are sitting now, the first episode was last week, which is where I mentioned it. So I got a sample of that uh, from the Pipe Club. It's now jarred up and sitting there. I enjoyed it quite well. Um, I'm actually smoking a cob as well, but this one is one of my cob foolery pipes that I've made up myself. It's uh, made of two legend pipes here. Uh, it's stuck together one on top of the other to make a calabash type chamber. A uh, bowl from a Pony Express or a Mark Twain or forget Tom Sawyer I think is what they call this one and then I just took a regular thing shoved through the bottom curved the stem a little bit it's kind of um Paul shaped I guess Mm -hmm. yeah that's what I get when I look at it and uh, yeah it was one of those things where I started this up for the Cobb Foolery Contest for Aristocobb and uh, I didn't like the way it was turning out so I set it aside and did something else but it's still a great smoker the only thing that I would do differently if I was to build it again is I would put a, a hole here with a, with a cork or something in it to remove it so I could clean it just a little bit more easier through here. Mm. Or through here. Now that so you yeah. can see what I'm doing. But uh, other than that, it smokes very well. I'll get it out every once in a while. It was it was sitting here, so I figured, oh, I'll get a, get a small bowl going on this one. and. The tobacco, I can't tell you the name. I knew it um, when I got it because it was a sample that was given out at our most recent Pipe Club meeting. That's, I can tell you it's a Virginia Flake, and that's all I remember. Yeah, 
know, that's that's definitely a pipe you should uh, take with you on a walk around the neighborhood. That'll definitely uh, turn some heads that uh, aren't used to uh, seeing pipe smokers out. And with that, uh, we should uh, wrap it up. So if you want to continue to follow us throughout the week, you can always catch me on all the social medias at DRAllen201. That's Instagram, Twitter, um, wherever I happen to be, Greg. And I am on Twitter at the underscore Badger Piper and Instagram at the Badger Piper. And you can always email us at reverseflashtime at gmail.com. And we will be glad to uh, share your thoughts. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, hit that smash that like button, uh, subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, again, what, what was your first fandom that you were into, or the first one? Absolutely. That you were into? What uh, what did you remember just uh, obsessing over as a, as a kid and teenager that uh, you look back at fondly? We'd love to. I always loved hearing that stuff. So. Uh, uh, leave a comment and we'll uh, gladly uh, check that out and uh, if not talk about it on the show try to reply absolutely and if you do have any uh, suggestions for things that we could cover down the road we would be glad to take those as well but until next week good smokes great great viewing of your uh, of your entertainment and we will see you next week catch you later